Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Thank you for stopping by today. It is dating advice and if you're new here, I'm Carrie. I am a matchmaker and a dating coach. I'm in the Chicago area, but I have clients all around the country for both date coaching and matchmaking. If you wanted any more information on any of that, it's down in my description bar. I encourage you while you're there to subscribe. This is a channel I created sweater weather. I was wearing a sweater earlier and in the lights I can see it. <laughs> I hope you will subscribe to my channel. I encourage comments. If I say something and it sparks a thought or an idea for you, I would love for you to share that in the comment section with the rest of us down below. Always welcome your comments. Today I wanted to talk a bit about, hmm, it's taken me a while to formulate the true telltale red flag signals that anybody who is trying to avoid a narcissist should be on the lookout for on a first date. So it's, it's a lot to figure out mental state of someone after just one date, but there are some things that we can watch out for if we're trying to avoid that situation and getting into something with somebody who is not emotionally available to us. And if you think that is interesting, stick around because that is what we're up to and talking about today. Okay, so we're trying to avoid a narcissist, and this one is super quick, super easy, and it's one of the first things you will encounter, and that is where you choose to sit. Is this person, and because this is a channel I created for women over 50, despite the fact I know you guys are out there, and I appreciate you being there, I recognize there are female narcissists out there dating, so please just flip it, and these are as equally applicable to men as they are women. And because I'm a woman and a bigger proportion of my clients are women, at least 70% of my clients are probably women, I'm going to go with the woman trying to avoid a male narcissist. Totally understand. You're probably looking to avoid female narcissists as well. Is he making a production about where to sit. Does it require something special to make him, to allow him to show that he has something special going on and he deserves a better seat than where the hostess was just trying to seat you? Because that's right off the bat, a quick telltale sign that maybe you should watch a little bit more closely if he feels he requires special treatment just to get seated in a restaurant. So watch out for that. Any special requests for seating that need to make him feel that he's above everybody else in the place and deserves better treatment. Sign number one. And that special seating leads us to number two, which is they need to be made to feel special. There is an arrogance about them. There is an inflated ego that needs to be fed with a narcissist. So if you feel that most of what's going on during this date is all about them and it's feeding their ego and it's all about their opinions and what they want to share and they're truly not asking any questions about you. They're just trying to charm you with this amazing story of how great they are, how great their life is. No questions to you as to what your thoughts or feelings or experiences are. You want to be aware that these are typical signs. I do want to point out some some people, if you notice, they're not bragging or trying to make themselves look special, but they are not um, asking enough questions about you. Not the same thing. Some people, when they get nervous, talk too much, talk too much about themselves, but those same people would not be speaking about themselves in such grand terms and trying to make you feel that they are so impressive and that you should be in awe because they're super cool and so charming. <laughs> you see a ponytail that just popped up in the screen. Somebody needed some attention. She was crying on the floor. It would be her. Uh, in this scenario, this is beyond self-confidence. This has much more to do with arrogance and needing to be the center of attention, needing to be the star of the show and impress you. Let me give Tallulah a little attention and I'll be back with the next one. Thanks, Tallulah. You 
feeling better? You got a little love, huh? We know that narcissists have a lack of empathy and you can sometimes see this on a first date by how they treat other people. How do they treat the wait staff? Do they realize these are human beings who are working trying to make a living that they have challenges of their own in waiting on people who have different needs at different times or is he short and impatient with the wait staff that might be indicative of somebody who definitely has a narcissistic personality if he can't empathize with the people who are working at the restaurant Beyond that, how does he talk about other people? Does he speak of them kindly like a nice human being who has different feelings about different people, would characterize the different relationships in his life? Or is he basically putting everybody else down, not giving compliments freely where they may be deserved? Is everybody not quite as good as him? Those are definitely things you should watch out for. Another characteristic of narcissists that there are, is that there are very high highs and very low lows. Their temperament is not even keel. You're, there's going to be drama and big blow ups and there's going to be excitement. Some people are drawn to that excitement of highs and lows. And I'm trying to think of a way that you would be able to notice some type of example of this on a first date. I think the only thing I've ever seen is I've never seen someone turn on someone in a first date because in those early stages they're trying to impress you and charm you. I would just say do you feel like when they're talking to you telling stories about things are some things were just incredibly amazing and things were horrible horrible you know were there extreme highs and lows in situations that they describe to you about their life or is everything we had some good times we had some bad times when talking about a relationship or was she the most evil demon in the world or was she the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen because there are such extremes and highs and lows so maybe that's something you could watch for number four I feel really confident that we can figure this out on a first date and that is the fact that when you are on a date with a narcissist there is especially a first date second date those early stages it is just too much too soon they are trying to sweep you off your feet charm the heck out of you and make you think that they are God's gift to women and that you are so lucky that you met them. They're going to go out of their way in very extreme ways in order to woo you. If this person seems too good to be true, they are not too good to be true. They are bad news. The thing that narcissists do is they will do something called love bombing. And they will just shower you with compliments and just tell you you're the most beautiful woman in the world. And my God, you're the smartest one I've ever met. And wow, your job, you are just so amazing. And so besides building themselves up and trying to make you think that they are the bee's knees, they are also going to come on really, really strong in order to get you to fall for them. Narcissists have to manufacture romanticism and those emotions because they don't feel that. So they have a tendency to just come on really, really strong with it and the relationship becomes a whirlwind. It's everything happening really fast because he doesn't just like you and think that maybe you guys should get together again. He has to see you and he has to see you soon because this is the best date he's ever had and you're just so amazing. He can't let you get away and there's just a lot of excess and you can kind of figure out by these examples what love bombing looks like because you see if he, you're special that means that he's special so he's going to tell you everything you want to hear if you've imagined a romantic date with somebody falling head over heels that's what he's playing out for you in this date because he's not feeling real emotions in this situation no empathy no true uh, human emotions in these people. So watch out for those extremes and that love bombing. Number five, you can watch out for somebody kind of crossing personal boundaries because if these questions become a little too personal, 
It's not that somebody's just truly interested in knowing your soul. Most likely with a narcissist, they're trying to learn about you quickly because they're learning what they can use against you to manipulate to manipulate you later. This gathering information will come back to haunt you if you have things you that you wouldn't share normally, but he's gotten you to express these. It's also so that you feel super close to him and you feel, oh my gosh, he's so understanding. I can speak to him so easily, but I can pretty much guarantee you that these things are going to come back and haunt you and be used against you to make you not feel great about yourself in the future. So if somebody's coming on too much, too soon, too strong, and too personal, red flags are waving. I want to move on to number six, but I just looked at my notes and there was something I wanted to say. Oh yeah. They are trying to create, to manufacture intimacy with those personal questions too. So I just wanted to point that out. And this next one is, they're not saying nice things. We kind of touched upon it before, but they're trash talking other people. They don't have nice, kind things that most people would say about friends, family, people from their past, people they know, people around them. They knock other people down to build themselves up. And nice people don't do that. Nice people build other people up to build themselves up. So be aware of trash talking others, their ex, their family, their friends, people around them. That's not normal. Two little pieces I wanna drop in here before I move on. And that would be that one, not typically a good sense of humor in narcissists. They don't really get that humor. So if you're not, la if you are laughing and you're having a good time, you're probably safe. And if this person seems to have no sense of humor at all, it's not easy to laugh because everything's so serious, highs and lows, don't forget, that should be raising a red flag for you. Also, they're never wrong. So if there is a situation with the order and you heard them say they wanted medium rare and it comes medium rare and they say, I said medium and they won't give in. And you know, situations like that, those are little things that could help you recognize somebody with this issue, this illness, I should say. And just be aware, somebody who is never wrong is probably not superhuman. So you want somebody who's a well-rounded, healthy individual. Healthy people are wrong sometimes. I'm wrong lots of times. I'm wrong most of the time, <laughs> depending who you ask. And finally, we'll come to no number seven, and I have a couple different examples. I may have to consult my notes, but they're very demanding of attention. They want all the attention. They want to soak up all the light in the room. So for instance, should you have your cell phone nearby and you're checking the phone and you go back to talking to them and you noticed that they are not hiding their annoyance with that fact that something else was more important than they were in this conversation. If the reaction is a little extreme for the fact that you just checked to make sure that you didn't receive a work call or a kid call or a family situation, and if they're real annoyed by that, that should raise a red flag for you because they feel they need to have all the attention and be the center of attention at all times. They want praise. They want your gratitude. They want you to be thankful if they bought you the meal. You can't just say, oh, thanks, I'll get it next time. You've got to really lay it on for them to be happy. So if you feel they're pulling that from you and asking and expecting that gratitude, that should maybe give you pause for thought. It's almost like they want to be worshiped and no normal, healthy, functioning human being wants to be worshiped or put on a pedestal. We want to be seen as humans who have our fine qualities and also have our flaws as humans do. So if somebody's hiding their flaws from you, that does not sound like, oh, I feel like I keep saying the same thing over. That's not healthy. Somebody trying to hide their humanness. I guess that sort of gets us through the first date, but I would say that also to watch out after the date ends, if the follow-up to that date is a constant barrage and more love bombing and more like, wow, I met a guy and he is doing what I've been hoping a guy will do for years. He actually does text me like 10 times a day 
watch out. If you don't respond right away, it takes a little too long to respond. Somebody's going to be ticked off. You kept them waiting. So something else you could watch out for. But after the date, really be aware of that moving things along too quickly, things looking too good to be true, him falling much too quickly, making you feel that you're a little more special than he should even realize how special you are. And I hope you found these helpful. And I think I have a lot of people who say that they came out of a relationship who, with somebody who didn't have good mental health and they are trying to avoid making the same choices again in another partner. So I wanted to make sure I got this video right. So if you have something to add, this is, I always say if you have something to add, feel free to leave a comment down below. But I think if you do have something to add for this topic, you should feel that you really want to share it with the rest of us because you're really helping people out in an important way if there's something I missed that you think is important to share. So please do that down in the comments below if you have something to add to the conversation. I would appreciate it for sure. And while you're there, maybe you would subscribe to the channel, hit the ring bell so that you're notified when I upload new videos. I would look forward to having you back again anytime. You are welcome. Looking forward to the next time and until then, have a good one.